Hey Cassidy, I'm Mark Lynn, and we're Private Party. And you're listening to the All Elite Podcast. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the All Elite Podcast, episode number 43, right here on the No Holds Bar Network, your source for all wrestling podcasts, content, and more. I'm your host of the All Elite Podcast, as always, your executive, uh, I guess you're uh, actually your owner and CEO of the network and the podcast, Kyle Masters, and I'm always joined by my co-host. She is the executive vice president of Giggles, the heartbreak chick herself. Tiffany, what's going on, Tiff? We are live. We're back live again. No, back. it's been too long. We missed you guys. Oh, what is going on? Damn issues. Damn freaking issues, man. I don't know what was going on. I had my service provider over my house. They didn't do what I thought they were going to do. I've, as Apparently right now we're all go. We'll see what happens. I said I would test it out today or and then i would call the mac if we had problems so far so good so tiff if something happens please let me know while we're recording here because i have a recording in an yeah. offline file at the same time just in case um we are live on youtube guys youtube.com slash nhbwr make sure you head on over and hit that subscribe button to get us to our goal of 1000 so we are are in a competition with uh a kenny for your thoughts podcast uh, happy 50th episode by the way kenny and with smart to death so we're in a race to 1000 yeah, we had the lead a little bit to start this competition, but help us anyways. Help us get there to 1,000, guys. Hit that subscribe button and share the podcast with all your friends. So we're so close. So we're live only on YouTube today. Just wanted to do this episode just on YouTube just to make sure that it was good. We were all good. Seems like all signs are a go. So starting next week, we'll be back on Twitch and Twitter. So uh, that's when we're live on uh, all three of those platforms each and every single week. Uh, next week, guys, we're already here. AW on TNT is debuting live next week. I am so freaking excited for this, Tiff. You have no idea. A, because we've We're been going. literally talking about this for, like, since January. And B, I'm going. So, like, uh, I'm going to – I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm going to be leaving very early Wednesday morning, hoping to get to D.C. by lunch or 1 o'clock, get into our Airbnb, check in, and then – Head on over and just walk around that area. There's lots to do in that area where the arena is. So I'll be walking around out and about. I'll be wearing that shirt behind me, the AEP shirt, that whole day. So if you are going and you recognize that shirt, that'll be me. Just come say hi. We'll do. You know, we'll have a picture. We'll go for a beer. Whatever you want to do. I'll be in DC for that day for uh, uh, AW on TNT uh, Dynamite. We have a name now. Dynamite. Ah. Dynamite. <laughs> I'm telling Tiff off air here. Then that's all I think of when I hear the 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 name dynamite. I've been posting that gif everywhere too. The dynamite. <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. Um, yeah, if you're new to the podcast, welcome to the Ali Podcast, where myself and Tiff uh, go over everything in AEW. We'll do reviews. We do like being the elite reviews. Uh, we're gonna go over row to TNT today. Um, and starting next week, we'll be doing the weekly TV reviews. I'm not Woo. sure how the structure is going to go just yet because we're going to be reviewing the show mostly. I think we're going to include news and rumors into that show when we can, depending on how long it is. Uh, I just, I'm not sure how it's going to go, so it'll be kind of in beta for those first couple of weeks uh, how we're going to structure that show, but it'll be the same format. Myself and Tiff talking about AEW, but mainly we'll be reviewing the weekly show. And uh, I'll have uh, first hand accounts from that show and a first, like a live reaction review for you guys. Uh, I'm not too sure when we're going to do it. I'm not sure if it's going to be the Thursday night after or get it out to you guys Friday. So uh, keep an eye out on our Twitter account for that information. But Tiff, I'm so excited. We're happy for you. We're so close. I know. Um, (laughs) And then it'll be almost a month away till full gear. Oh, my God. Can't believe it. uh, Yeah. I'm pumped. We'll be together. uh, AWDC. DC. Let's talk about it. Um for you guys that don't know and you've been living under a rock, if you don't know AWs in DC, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I don't know what Oof. you're doing with your life. Oof is right, Tiff. Oof. 
Um, but AEW is going to be at the Capital One Arena Wednesday, October 2nd. Tickets went on sale back on August. On August 2nd, I was able to get tickets after an hour and a half of trying to get these tickets. I finally got and snagged me a pair. So I'll be going. Be there for history, as the poster says. First ever TV live event. Cannot wait for this. Um, we have a bunch of confirmed stuff for that DC uh, show. We have John Moxley appearing live. Uh, hope, uh, I'm, it's all signs are pointing towards he's going to be ready to go for a match. Not sure if they're going to hold him back that episode because of his injury, and they just want to make sure. Because I know they don't want to jeopardize another Moxley and Omega match. So maybe he, he will be there in some capacity. I'm not sure if he's going to have a match or not. We'll see. But he'll be appearing live in uh, Washington, D.C. for that first episode of Dynamite. We have our boy Brandon Cutler. He has a match. Yes. He's oh going to be facing off against MJF in a one-on-one -on -one grudge match. Cannot wait to see that. And cannot wait. We were just talking about this off air here. Let me tell you, like, we actually never seen a full... Brandon Cutler match yet in AEW. Like he was a he was in the Double or Nothing Battle Royal, but we haven't had like an actual match from him yet. So this is officially his first one on one match, and he's yeah. facing MJF in a grudge match. So this is going to be good. So we're very excited it, for this. It was funny because when we interviewed him, we were like, "When are we going to see Brandon Cutler mm -hmm. um, have a match?" And we were like, "Oh, we're gonna get some MJF. We're gonna get some Sammy G. Like, what is going on?" So as you guys know, we're huge, huge fans of him. Mm -hmm. So. I'm a little jealous that you get to see this match live, and I don't. But that's okay. I was that all out, so okay. rub this in my face a little bit. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but speaking of Sammy G, he has a match. He's facing off against Cody Rhodes yeah. in a one-on-one -on -one match. And this is a big match. This is a bigger match than uh, people, I think, are, are uh, labeling, it, labeling it as. Um, a, because this is a big match for Sammy G to go against uh, a big person like that in AEW in his first match on TV like that. Uh, not on necessarily AEW TV, but like the first episode of the weekly TV is going right up against Cody Rhodes. And also, Cody Rhodes kind of labeled this as if he can't beat Sammy G, he doesn't deserve the title shot and he's going to take himself out. So if he can't beat Sammy G, then we have no one to face Chris Jericho at Full Gear, which I don't think is going to happen. I think Cody's going to come out with this one, but I don't expect Sammy G to uh, make it easy for Cody. So I'm excited for this match. This is going to be a crazy match. Mm -hmm. We have the Women's Championship on the line between Oof. Riho and Nyla Rose. And at first, I was with a lot of you guys out there. I wasn't sure what to make of this match. It was really weird. It really wasn't what anyone expected. I think everyone, like myself, expected Britt Baker and Nyla Rose maybe to face each other. But we got Riho and Nyla Rose. And... It, What's going to get you more pumped is if these, these Road to TNT series, go back and watch those with the, the, the two things, with Re, the two episodes that they featured, Riho and Nyla Rose. It'll get you more excited and, and give you more of appreciation, I think, for uh, both these ladies here. So I cannot wait for that Women's World Championship match in D.C. Also, it was actually announced on that Road to TNT episode they dropped today. Um, it was originally supposed to be Hangman Page appearing live, but he has a match. He's facing Pac. This is crazy. I really thought this was going to be saved for, like, full mm -hmm. year. Full like, yeah. I'm very surprised. So, if you guys, like, the whole story with this, guys, is Hangman was supposed to face Pac at Double or Nothing. And we had that whole mix-up. There was rumors of his visa not being cleared and all that. And then ended up being Hangman Page going overseas and facing Pac in an indie promotion match. So we're going to get the, the actual AEW match at D in DC next week. So I'm pumped for that and pumped for you guys to watch that. And I'm pumped to see this live. This is going to be one of the matches of the night, I think, Hangman and Pac. Man, this is going to be really good. Um, we saw how Pac, at what condition Pac is in. He looked really good at, uh, at All Out. So um, I'm excited for this. Very excited. The promo, the buildup for this is just crazy like i can't believe we're finally getting this this like again uh many many months ago like in the beginning with their press conference how we had this so mm -hmm. i love how we got this bill going see this is exactly what i'm talking about this is what makes me excited is this storytelling this is mm -hmm. so important so it's unfinished business let's go let's go and then the main event of aw on tnt dynamite we have kenny oh. omega and the young bucks the elite yeah dynamite <laughs> versus Chris Jericho and two mystery partners who I'd say 98% of the AEW fan base out there is in agreement that it's going to be LAX, but right. who knows? We don't know. Don't know. And they have a new name. I forget. I've heard someone say it or I read it somewhere. 
I don't know what they're being called at now. It's not by their names. They actually have a, a oh, name. Oh, God. I just went blank. Ugh. They have a new name now. So it's almost certain. I don't I don't think we've seen it yet, but I think Ali, or I guess I'll just call them LAX for now. They're going to be elite. We're going to get, they're going to be hashtag all elite. I'm excited, man. That's another huge tag team to add to the division. His division is just getting bigger and oh, bigger. Oh, did Proud and Powerful? Was yes, that it? Yes, that's it. Proud, okay. Pride and Powerful or Proud and Powerful? Proud. Proud okay. and Powerful. So, regardless of the name, because really the names don't really mean much. I mean, you have Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, who people say is uh, should be a boy and it's dinosaur. But um, we have them known as Jungle Express. Or was it the Jurassic Express? Sorry. So, regardless of the name, the tag teams are going to be way better than what the names are made. Like, it's this tag team division is just so stacked. It's ridiculous. And it's just going to keep getting more stacked. Like, I, I, I just read in a rumor, uh, the rumor mill lately. It's not in our news today. But I read that um, the Revival and the WWE are, offered, are being offered a huge money deal. And they're actually thinking of turning it away. <laughs> so... I think they want to come over. I really do think, because you you think about it, people are comparing it to like the club, right? And a club had a club signed five years. And now look what they're doing to them. The club have done like everything, right? They've they went around New Japan. They like they've done the th- stuff with the elite. Like they're they're basically almost at the end of their career where they can say, okay, we can sign a long term contract to you know stay here and we'll be okay. The revival are still young. I think they still have a lot to do. They've only been really mainstream in wwe so i think if they leave and go to aw that's gonna put their name more out there and you're gonna go into a tag team division that's got so many names so far and it's you know their name's just gonna increase from there and you know challenge for that spot of best tag team in the world and then and then you go back to the the early tweets i think it was like november december when both the revival and the young bucks were like one day we're gonna face the revival Mm -hmm. remember this treat um this tweet and then they reversed that it was just I don't know. It's. I feel like it's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, Wouldn't that be something? Can you imagine? If it's a revival, the mystery partners. Oh my god! Because <laughs> like history has shown us that this has happened in the past, but it's it's different now because with leaks and everything, it's so much easier to get that information. But back right. then, no one had no idea Scott Hall was going to walk through that crowd and and show up on WCW TV or Lex Luger is going to come through the mall like that. When that ha- those two things happen, people are like, "What the hell?" Why is a WWF star over here? Like, what are they doing here? So, like, it, I know it's more tougher to do that kind of surprise factor today, but can you imagine? But their their contracts aren't until 2020. Vince McMahon would sue the, yeah, sue the hell out of them if they even tried something like that. So, oh my God. One day. It would be nuts, One though. It would be crazy. We're not we're saying – we're not saying we're, like, we're – you know, relax yeah, with people out there that right. want to criticize right away. We're not saying we want that to happen. We're just saying it would be crazy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, AW – DC next week, Dynamite first episode, Dynamite, and I love the graphics and all the explosion of the colored uh, Dynamite. I guess explosion they're calling it. I love those two things. Those look really really cool. Love those two posts. They really they had one was everybody on it, and they had one with uh, Cody and uh, our boy Gold Dust, Dustin Rhodes, Red Dust, whatever you want to call him. Um, so that was pretty cool. So I love those two posters. I love the name. I'm cool with it. Let's get it on. Next week's a big week in wrestling. Huge, huge. Oh. I'm ready. Give it to me. Um, and and uh, start starting next week with the week after in Boston, 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 Boston. Are they khakis? I don't know how to. I can't do a Boston accent. I can do a pretty good New York one. I can't do a Boston you can't one. Do New York accent. I can do okay. a New York accent. Yeah, I'm walk. I'm walking here. Okay, let me go get my coffee. I spilled my coffee over my pants. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what? No. 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 Anyways, no. Oh. Uh, starting that week, we have the start of the tag team tournament. If you guys haven't seen the bracket, I'll put up on the screen for you guys right now. We have the Young Bucks and Private Party going on in round one. Lucha Bros, Jurassic Express in uh, the, the left side to finish off the left side bracket. Best friends in SCU in the right side in the dark order with uh, Tiss favorite creepers getting the buy into the second round of the tournament. <laughs> um, so you still sticking with your picks? Are you still, uh, yeah. still locking them? No, I'm loyal, man. Mm-hmm. I'm loyal. Let's go. I'm private party. SCU. Let's go. <laughs> okay. I'm still locking my pick. Unless something changes. I said, I said, unless something changes that's visible change, then I'll change my picks. But 
so far I'm locking mine in too. So I can't wait. I can't wait for that tag team turn to start and we can start reviewing it and watching it on TV. Um, I'm speaking of watching. I'm still like every day I've been checking to see if they've announced a Canada deal yet. I'll be okay if they don't right away for the first couple of weeks because I have my sources and I have access to uh, TNT drama up here through a certain service. So um, I'll be okay to watch. Or even if I have to get BR Live to watch, I'll be okay. So um, I'm just hoping they announce a Canada deal soon. Really soon. I'm hoping. Come on. Sure, soon. Like, it's next week already. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, before we go anywhere, guys, quickly take a quick break here. We're not going anywhere, but uh, just to announce that uh, follow us on social media. How about that? Follow us on social media. Follow us on Facebook at All Elite Podcast. Follow us on Instagram at All Elite Pod. And follow us on Twitter at All Elite Pod. Most importantly, Twitter. Twitter is our main hub for everything, guys. Make sure you are following that and following myself, Real Kyle Masters, and my co host at Loves to Dream 82. All links are located down in the description below on YouTube, our YouTube version of the podcast. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button. That's the most important part. Hit it. Click it. Then hit the like button. It's that easy. All you have to do is click. You're not even paying for anything. Just click. Click it. Click. <laughs> Click it. Smack it. Smack it. Whatever. Gotta Pop do. it. Twist it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you have to do to subscribe. Do all that stuff. We're, yes. also, va- <laughs> We're also available on the go. Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, CastBox, iHeartRadio, to name a few. We are available everywhere you are getting your podcast. Make sure you are searching up the correct All Elite Podcast with myself and Tiffany. All links are located down in the description below for you on YouTube as well. And just to let you guys know, AEPTs, the new store is coming soon. I am almost done designing it. It looks fantastic, by the way. I'm so excited to share this store with you guys. Thank you to our friends, Kayfabe Tees, for letting us use the software to design our store. It looks amazing. It is under construction still. So uh, bear with us while we go through that with our construction for AEPTs, the new store, coming soon. Coming soon. AEPTs. We need, the, we need like the movie trailer guy to do that for us. <laughs> Come to a theater near you, cause it's rated R. <laughs> Yikes! I didn't know we were rated R. Oopsies. <laughs> I mean, Tiff, I thought we were at fourteen A. Uh, yeah, about. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I. I don't know if YouTube's gonna like that. We might have to uh, find another platform. I don't think they've reached rated R yet. <laughs> Crap. Crap. Uh, anywho, uh, let's go a little bit around the AW world. You guys know how we do here. We like to uh, share with you guys and share our opinions of what's going on around the AW world. A uh, funny couple of things have been happening the last couple of days. Uh, obviously one with Kenny Omega. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. Guy is uh, drinking binge or what, but we'll get into that with being the elite. But uh these have been funny. It all started with this picture of Cody tweeting this picture of himself and Brandy Rhodes on the back of the uh, AEW production truck that's finally made and ready to go. Excited. Looks really well done. Love the graphic work, and I love that. Brandy and Cody there in the back. A bunch of the AEW stars decided to get in on the fun with their obviously horrible Photoshopping, but it's all fun and games, and it's all <laughs> hilarious. Um, so it started out with uh, Hangman Page. He cropped himself in our boy, oh, what? <laughs> Hunter Horse Helmsley. Yeah, he's all the, elite. He's uh, <laughs> yeah, we know he's all elite. He's on the back of the production truck, so we got some cowboy shit happening there. <laughs> cowboy shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know who did this. I forget if it was Matt or Nick did this, but cropped. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. His face. I love it. He's just so cute. But like, uh, displaying new T-shirts from the, if you've seen Being Elite this I, week. I kind of like uh, the white shirt, to be honest with you. I don't know why, but that just makes it look good. So <laughs> Nick just looks so freaking unamused. <laughs> but uh, Matt, man, your your you, you, I guess your Photoshop skills are good. Yeah. Nick is the one that photoshopped. Oh, my God. I can't with you. What? Oh, did I write you it backwards? I did write it backwards. Damn it. Yeah, I did. Oh. Sorry. It, when, it's weird when I transfer from, like, what, looking to paper, I always get it backwards. I don't know why I do that. God. But when, I, but what, if I don't do it, I can actually say it properly. <laughs> I should just, just do it oh, off the top of my head. you been with this how long now, and you still can't tell the difference? Shh. Anyways. Not Nick. I can't Let's with you. Let's move into the next picture, shall we? <laughs> And we got, oh, God, Kenny. 
<laughs> Someone took a screenshot of Kenny in the one part of BTE with his glasses down. <laughs> Can you imagine a production truck like that going through with Kenny on the back? I, that'd be hilarious. That'd be great. If, if I seen Kenny with that truck going by, I, I don't know what I'd do with that. Laugh. You would die laughing. I probably would swerve off the road. What is this? Mm. Whose man is this? <laughs> Kenny tweeted that out. And then uh, lastly but not least, not too long ago today, uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy and uh, cropped each other on the back of the truck uh, getting in on the fun. So uh, uh, that was pretty cool. They were all doing it the last couple of days. I thought it was pretty hilarious. So, um, yeah. It's fun with wrestling, guys. Like, yeah, you can I'm, have fun with shock. I'm shocked. You can have fun with wrestling? Gasp. Oh my God! That's gosh, a thing. For this. Oh. <laughs> okay. Didn't know you can have fun with wrestling, Tiff. I. You should have reminded me before the show. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I don't know. I'm queen of the indies, so you should already know. Are you really though? Yes, I really am. Says who? Says everybody. Says the guy I chopped on Saturday. <laughs> oh, you chopped someone. I mean, Hang my on a sec here. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Transition screen back. What did you do? I think we need the story here. Ladies All and gentlemen, right. Tiffany chopped someone. I did. All right. Okay. So I went, <laughs> I went to IWA, which was in New Jersey. And, of course, I went to go support number one husband. But not only do I support number one husband, there's a lot of wrestlers there as well that I support. So there's a wrestler named Astro Morales, who I actually want to ask to come on our Under the Ropes episode. I think that might be our next okay. pick. Um, so he knows me from prior uh, wrestling indie shows or whatever. So, oh, God, I can't think of the guy's name. So a, lot, a lot of these wrestlers, I don't know. They're new to me. So whoever mm -hmm. he was facing at IWA... Astro grabbed his arms and was walking around the whole front rows. Okay. Um, and he was having the fans chop the guy. Oh. So I'm like, this guy is going to come over to me and have me chop this guy. Well, listen, I was in the reserve section. I was the last one. And I was so embarrassed, but I went all in. I licked oh. my hand. I got to find the video for this. It hasn't been posted yet because they said they were going to tag me in this shit. I licked my hand and I freaking chopped him oh, so Oh, big show chopped hard. him. <laughs> Dude, it was so loud. It echoed in the room and they popped. Everybody wow. popped so loud for me. So, yeah, I made my in-ring debut the other day. Okay, well, <laughs> golf clap. <laughs> But yeah, so thank you. But that was fun, and I was told that he was in the back crying after. <laughs> so don't mess with me, okay? Like, hmm. don't. I'll give you one of those chops. So, okay. <laughs> don't mess with me, Kyle. Uh, okay. <laughs> Anywho, um, last thing I wanted to show you guys was the two posters. I forgot I had these in here. So those are the two posters that they released for a promo for Dino Might. Dino uh, I love the left one. Love all the wrestlers on there and. The explosion of colors. I just, I love all everything. It just looks so damn good. I love the production team for AEW, man. It just looks amazing. And then even the Cody and the uh, Dustin Rhodes one looks really good, too. Um, so those were the two promo posters they did release. Awesome, awesome stuff. Cannot wait for Dino Mai. Dino Mai. Dino Oh, nice. We need to know who this graphic guy is. Seriously. Yeah, yeah Salarex, is it you? Are you, are, you, are you not telling us something? Hmm? Maria, is this you? <laughs> Anyone we know? The graph work? Are you not telling us something? Come on. Give us the inside scoop. Yes. So we can unscoop it. Ooh. Oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, let's just briefly go over uh, okay. the road to TNT today. The recent Absolutely. episode. Uh, I know you recently skimmed through it, Tip, but you're going to go back and watch it. You told me it before. Yeah. Um, because the, the beginning was a tearjerker. Oh, oh yeah, my I lord! That. Uh, our boy Brandon Cutler had a big spot with the beginning of this episode. If you guys want to know how the appreciation we have for Brandon Cutler, just watch the beginning of that, and you'll get it. Uh, if you don't, then you know you have no heart. That's all I'm yeah. gonna say. Uh, so know. like, <laughs> <laughs> so we had uh, him, and we got the story of him and the Young Bucks, 
and like how they start when they were like 10 and 12 years old with the young bucks having their own backyard ring which is pretty cool and then brand's like man i he's like imagine being a kid and finding out the kids down the street have a backyard ring and you have and you love wrestling so like i mean that's crazy and just telling like how like they grew up with each other and stayed in contact and then denise comes in and then they talk about the whole contract signing uh like matt and nick giving a, a color contract even that was a tear jerker and then uh denise started to break down in this too because like she's like we can finally move out of that crappy house that they were in and brennan's worked so hard his whole life to get to this point and it was just it was so emotional i just it, like we already love denise and brand it just loves them even more after this like we need a family photo guys I'm telling you right now clip this send it to denise brand guys baltimore me you brandon tiff denise family photo it's got to be done yeah. all four of us hopefully that gets to happen so um if not we're definitely going to meet at starcast 100 yeah. percent. so then they go over the mjf feud with uh brandon cutler and all the videos that he's released and uh brandon cutler kind of does his own kind of promo take on him and then they talk about the match in dc next week which is uh brandon cutler's first aw official one-on-one -on -one match so i'm excited for it like we said before um and then we saw briefly before we went on air that mjf kind of replied to it <laughs> with uh oh how many so so good at being a heel it's awesome if you you guys can go check it out i'm not sure exactly what the tweet said but it was heelish that's for sure uh, we got Tony Siobhan, the AW Control Center. Love that Control Center. And Tony Siobhan as well. Awesome stuff. Goes over the name Dynamite being announced. Uh, then he goes over all the AW DC matches. And that's where we got the announcement of Hangman versus Pac. Um, so he kind of briefly goes over each one of them. Then he goes over the, we got the, we get the story of Riho and Nyla. This is where we got uh, both takes from both sides in this one. And the beginning actually was Kenny and sharing his story of how he uh found the joshis and grown the appreciation for the joshi wrestling and we got the kind of the tease of like he he's like he picked riho and they showed like the match he had with riho and it's it's like almost saying like he's like in love with her without actually saying it so i think the rumors of them dating is probably very true but it was a really cool story and then we got nyla talking about all her obstacles in life you know, being being black, being Samoan, and being a trans, and having those obstacles go through her life and transition into wrestling, and what she's had to overcome to get to this point today. So I thought it was a really cool story for back and forth, especially with Rio saying like, you know, people doubt me because of my size and my look uh, in wrestling, and it, it, it I it's to where the point that I can prove to these people I'm better than that. So I love that whole story. Um, and our boy Conrad Thompson joined Tony Siobhan in the Control Center. Um, so that's cool that he's getting in on that. And uh, they're talking about AWDC. They bring up the tag team tournament. Uh, Conrad picks Jurassic Express to win the whole thing. So he went with the underdog pick there. I guess they're not really considered underdogs in my eyes. But to a lot of people, they're considered underdogs because of who they have to face in the round one, potential of round two. So uh, I guess you can, in a way you can say they're underdogs, right? I think. Yeah. Would you say? I don't know. Yeah. I think, oh, yeah. I mean. He did bring up, though, that uh, he's saying Jurassic Express because Lucha Bros and Young Bucks are going into this tournament banged up still from all out. Like, they're going to be feeling the effects still. So, I mean, they should. Man, that match was brutal. You're going to be feeling those effects for two months at least. <laughs> um, and they bring up uh, Jericho and Cody at full gear. And then we get this awesome promo done by Cody Rhodes. And he starts off the promo saying, like, uh, this is supposed to be about, you know, Sam Guevara. And we are supposed to talk about Sam Guevara. But let me transition it to Chris Jericho. It starts talking about, uh, this was so very well done, by the way. It starts talking about, like, the Judas effect and how people were laughing at it at first, but it's knocked out two of the best wrestlers in the in the world and people close to Cody. So he's like, you have to be taking the Judas effect seriously. Um, he goes on about Jericho calling his dad a son of a bitch and how much that uh, affects Cody. Uh, he basically tells Jericho, but, but you're supposed to be the king of promos and everything. Do better than that. Like, he's basically encouraging Jericho. He's like, you want to call yourself the king of promos, and you're doing all these unreal promos, unscripted. Do better than that. Like, he's pushing his buttons. It's great. Um, it. He also brings up that it's Jericho's birthday on at the day of full gear. Yeah. I think <laughs> I we talked about this a little bit before. We might have. I think it might have been in the news and rumors, but, like, I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, so this is interesting. And then the best part of this whole promo was the end of the promo, where he goes, oh, yeah, so in Baltimore at full gear, don't forget the belt. Then he looks at the camera to his side again. 
I died. Oh, that was fantastic. That was great. I'm like, oh, he throws the shot of him losing the title belt. I'm like, like, oh my god, if these are the promos, guys, that we're getting on weekly TV, on AEW, and for pay-per-views, like, how can you not be excited for this company? I, I, I find it hard. There's still haters out there that don't want this company to succeed and are not giving this company a chance to just watching it. Right. Like, I don't right. understand that. Like, I've been an avid Derby watcher for years up until this point, and I've ne- I haven't seen promos like this and production like this this good in a long time. I don't know how this doesn't get you hyped. Goosebumps. But we've been talking about this for a while. This is stuff that we've been excited for. Yeah. Promos are gold. Mm-hmm. Gold. It just, it just, I'm ready. It just seems so natural, and they, it's like you don't, you don't feel like they're being, they're being held back at all. Like it's all natural. And it's all coming from the heart. That's what I love right. about it. Um, so that, that was uh, that for being or around the wrestling AEW world because I didn't really see anything else. A lot of people were hyping up that there's doing the countdown with a, a feature superstar every day today was Britt Baker. Mm. List of wise <laughs> Britt Baker. So uh, <laughs> what? So, we what? Nothing. Hmm? Nothing. I didn't you, say anything. You, you damn Nemo Seagull. Mine, 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 mine. <laughs> Well, this is my list of what I'm the list. I'm the queen of the list. This is all mine, 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 mine. No. Anyone that miss- mentions a list of something, you're like the seagulls from Finding Nemo. Shut up, okay? <laughs> I created the list of husbands. It is the reason. I am the reason this all happened. So, shh, okay. okay. <laughs> like, well, I, I. By the way, I, I dropped my list of wives. The librarian. <laughs> No, where's my glasses? Because yeah. I need to look around this all. Oh, God. Yes, yeah, hashtag I'm with AEW. Yes. That's also the hashtag that's been going around. I'm with AEW. So tweet that out, guys, if you're with AEW. Not saying you have to ditch everything else. I'm just saying if you're with AEW, tweet it out. Tweet it out. Yeah. Um, that's what I think the common mistake is around the wrestling community is, like, people will take you cheering for AEW as a sign that you don't want anything else to succeed. Unless you physically say that. Then I don't understand why people will just take that out of context. There's a lot of people out there that I've seen a lot, of, and I love those tweets. People are saying like, "Oh, they want." I mean, it's a little bit overdone in my eyes. Oh, wrestling! I want wrestling to succeed. I love every bit of wrestling. I think that's a really overdone tweet right now in the wrestling community. But you can do it without actually saying it. Imagine that you can actually do something without actually saying it and posting right. it on Twitter. Just go and enjoy it. Just go. Yeah. You're still into WWE. Keep watching it. I don't care. But I'm with AEW because it's. It's taken my heart. My heart is now in AEW's cabinet, and it's under lock and key. It's never coming out. <laughs> yeah, what Tiff just did. <laughs> <laughs> um, quickly, guys, if you guys want to follow us on Discord, we have a Discord. Link is yeah. down in the description. If you guys want to chat with other wrestling fans out there, go click the link. It's free to download the app. Free to talk with friends about AEW. Other starts of wrestling is pretty cool. There's a lot of fun and games you can do on this app, too. Cool, too. I have been on in a long time. Shame on me. But uh, AEW has a Discord. Click the link. Join for free. Also want to give a big shout out and a thank you to our friends from These Wolves for letting us use the song Dead to Me each and every single week here in the podcast. It is the official theme song of the All Elite Podcast. Go check them out, guys, on YouTube. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Follow them on Spotify and Google Play Music and uh, give them a five-star rating, guys. Awesome stuff. Download the song and have Dead to Me, the official theme song of the All Elite Podcast, on your playlist. Uh, Tiffany. Yes. Tiffany. Oh, boy. Are you ready for something new that we have for today? It's only for the video version, people. If you guys are ah. listening, you know it's the same. But uh, I've created a little clip. Not really. It's not a clip. It's just a, a still picture of our Being the Elite intro. So I'm going to put it up for you guys right now. And here we go into Being the Elite review this week. Episode 171, Shots to Take and Girls to Date. As you can see there in a picture of the AEW or AEP fans watching our BT review on the TV. And they are AEP's number one fan, those guys. I don't know who they are, but uh, they love us. That's why I got this picture. And they sent this picture to me directly. So uh, we're here for the BTE official review here on the All Elite Podcast, guys. And uh, interesting episode this week. Interesting episode. Um, we started off with the, uh, the Young Bucks. In their wrestling uh, training room, I guess their own custom gym that they have at their house now, which is pretty cool to have their own custom gym. Damn, EVP's getting paid. Uh, they're de- uh, showing off the new super kicks. 
Those are nice. Yep. Uh, by uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. I think you can get them on the website. I'm pretty sure. Ryan. Yeah, Ryan sent them over. So maybe it's in the works. Okay. But they're called Super Kicks, which is clever. I love it. I feel like I need a pair now to go with my leggings and my my Young Bucks shirt. You know. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think you. I think you need some super kicks. Just saying. Yes. Oh, I uh, Matt learned to Photoshop. He says, <clears throat> "Right? Did I get that right, Tiff?" Uh, Nick. Sorry, Nick. Learned I, Photoshop. Okay, <sighs> I was I was waiting for you. You didn't catch it right away. I'm waiting for you to catch it. That was no, like, that was done on purpose, like, by the way. I'm just I'm saying. Sorry, like I'm looking in the chat as well, so okay. I'm okay. multitasking sorry. everything. So, but so you're not stressed, Nick. Learned to Photoshop. He uh, shares with his brother, Matt. Uh, he said he designed the two best shirts of all time. It'll be the all-time bestsellers on Pro Wrestling Tees. <laughs> These are horrible shirts, guys. I don't, they're funny. I, I understand how people would buy them just because of how bad they are. Um, I don't know. I was telling Kyle before we went live, I actually kind of like the white shirt. I don't know why. It grew on me. I mean, I this just is just like – it, it continues the running joke of their T-shirt company. That's why they were doing this. Um, uh, Matt was very awkward about it. <laughs> he's just, he's in his head. You can tell he's like you, but he's just like, oh yeah, Nick, you're uh, you're pretty good, man. You're uh, <laughs> you're doing great here. And then uh, Nick thinks it'll be uh the best selling T-shirt of all time on pro wrestling tees. Uh, Matt uh, <laughs> Matt takes off his shirt and t- he's like, I want I want pictures. He t- tells Matt to put on the shirt. <laughs> And his face and his shirt's hilarious. And then uh, while uh, uh, Nick's walking away, Matt has his finger crossed, saying, like, oh, yeah, these are awesome shirts. And they zoom in on his finger being crossed. Like, but Nick was like, you wouldn't lie to me, right? Yeah, you oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't lie to you. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I just was, wouldn't, love, wouldn't lie to my ass, right? That, yeah, that's what he said. That, oh, my God. I love that. Tiff, you wouldn't lie to me, <laughs> would you? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Hashtag savage, like. <laughs> okay. Anyways, we're moving on with the intro. We had SCU you. live in New Jersey. Well, I mean, Kazarian and Sky kind of like. Well, wait, what do you mean we're live? You guys, Chris, Chris Rodan was like, "Oh, we're, we're live at the time of recording this." <laughs> and uh, for their last indie show, um, they said they have a package arrive for SCU from AEW for October second. So they were really excited to open it. And they open it, and they have uh, three items. The first item they pulled out was a comic book about Tarzan. They're very confused. And they pull out a little miniature doll, which Kazarian referenced the Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> and then uh, Christopher Daniels pulls out the dinosaur toy, and it clues in all right away. It was a joke package sent to them by, uh, the, the I guess, the Jurassic Express uh, the big loud, they added like la- corny laughing sound effects, like a sitcom kind of thing. Uh, Kazarian, uh, was like scared. He's like, I'm scared of Marco Stunt, man. The guy, the guy's a living cabbage patch kid, and I used to play with those and beat those up when I was a kid. I was dying with this. Oh, it's so great. Um, like, is there any more stuff in there? They're like, no, I don't see any spooky perverts. Uh, I don't see any people holding hands, and they're referring to the creepers and the best friends. Um, so yeah, so then they said uh, they're prepared and they're ready for next week or not next week for the uh, the tag team tournament and uh, ready to uh, get that going and maybe I don't know if this is a tease or what is it going to be maybe SCU and Jurassic Express in the finals that'd be interesting so okay. we'll see what happens uh, and then we get uh, Private Pate which listen this whole scene oh god I love this entire yeah, this was scene. this was I great love- which you're invited yes, you said you're invited so. I'm invited to the party. So we are on a quote unquote Instagram live, quote unquote, and this was hilarious. So throughout this whole thing, we had quote unquote celebrities messaging. You know how like if you're on Instagram live, the chat comes up. So we had I have the list here. We had Oprah, Beyonce, Mariah Carey, Wesley Snipes asking about a Blade reboot, (laughs) Eminem, Dr. Dre. Champagne Pappy, which is Drake, if no one knew that. Uh, Will Smith, Rihanna, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You missed Marty Skrull. And I'm not done yet. Oh. <laughs> I was naming the celebrities, not the wrestlers, celebrities. All right. Sorry. Okay. Even though he's a celebrity in your eyes, I know. <laughs> He'll be at House of Glory this uh, next Saturday, mm-hmm. by the way, guys. 
So you had a Young Bucks fan tweet in, or, you know, quote-unquote Young Bucks fan saying, asking them, are, what are you guys doing? Are you guys not getting ready for your Young Bucks match? And a private party brought it up saying, like, you know, the Young Buck kind of changed and uh, they're not the same as they used to be when they used to talk about, you know, being poor and all this mumbo-jumbo. Uh, Marty Skrull's tweet kind of came up and go, he goes, he goes, yeah, he, he, screw those guys. And he goes, hashtag all my friends are dead. <laughs> Uh, they're still including him in Beanie Lee. I love it. And then Jericho <laughs> chimes in. He goes, "Oh, what's that? A little bit of the bubble? Because they're about to have some. <laughs> I think they're about to pop some champagne. <laughs> so that was funny. So yeah, then in private party ended off by cutting a promo on the Young Bucks saying they're going to be ready. And they got to pop this party off. And then uh, basically we had the Young Bucks watching this. Or they're in the gym uh, after watching this. And uh, they're in the gym with Brandon Cutler. Cutler footage. He's there. Footage. They're all working out, and uh, Young Bucks kind of cut a promo on Pride Party. Like, how dare they? What, uh, for what we did to them, and what we did for them to bring them into AEW, how dare they say that about us? And then they asked Brandon, like, Brandon, have we changed? Are they right? And then Brandon kind of goes, well, I don't really want to say it. And I no, no, Brandon, you, you say. Say what's on your mind. Brandon brings up that, you know, they, they're making more money now. They're in this money craze phase. Like, they have their own private gym now, which is... Not with like, you know, how it used to be. And he's saying maybe, you know, maybe it's because you guys have just lost sight of wrestling and wrestling doesn't, it doesn't, it's not implied into your style anymore. And you guys don't have that chip on your shoulder. You guys don't have that drive anymore. And then uh, he brings up the whole PWIs and you guys got lowered points now on the PW Insider top 500, whatever it was. And then Matt left piss, or sorry, Nick left piss and then. <laughs> Uh, was it Matt that brought up? Uh, no, Nick brought up. Was like, how dare you? I, I can't believe you brought up the PW Insider uh, points. That was very low, Brandon. And Brandon was like, oh well, there goes one of my contracts because <laughs> he's oh, two contract Cutler. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was a funny segment. I like that. And yeah. then we ended off with BT Mailbag. Not really. Um, yeah, not really. Because it opened with Kenny. I'm like, okay, we're not getting a BT Mailbag for sure with Kenny opening this. And oh god, was he still disoriented? Uh, they're still even they they, they kind of propped up a text, a side view text of uh, the elite, which was uh, Young Bucks and <laughs> and him in a group text saying like uh, it just it showed the way like Hedy was typing and saying like he was still disoriented and nuts uh, that he was gonna do BT mailbag again. Uh, There's no question. Kenny just talks about uh, you know his recent. Okay, so before I get into this, guys. You guys don't know what they're making fun of in this. That it just went right over your head. Does anyone not remember Seth Rollins coming out and saying crazy stuff on social media and getting the backlash for it for stuff that he was saying? This is making fun of Seth Rollins. All this was making fun of Seth Rollins. <laughs> so I just I don't want people were going nuts over this and overreacting. Uh, so Kenny was talking about his recent talking around the talking around the wrestling world and the stuff he said he says he owes the fans an apology and he owes the wrestlers an apology that he's been uh talking crap about like this all this you guys are all getting worked if you guys are actually pissed about what kenny has been saying lately you guys are all getting worked it's all i'm gonna say um then we had the footage of him them putting the camera down like off camera quote unquote and uh he was going in about uh That'll hold those son of a bitches, you know, like calling like all the fans son of a bitches that are all the all the whiny fans that are complaining to him. Um, he's like, I should just write out an apology, make it look really good. And uh, then he says, uh, uh, TK is even fuming about this. Uh, he said he talks about all the burner accounts from wrestlers that are are making burner accounts and making fun of him and calling them the bigger marks than the fans. And he brings up uh, Donovan Dijakovic. Uh, making a burner account and calling him out. Uh, he makes fun of him and they, like just like like just doing this like nerdy impression of Dominic, and then just destroys all the trolls after that. I thought it was just a hilarious ending. If you guys are buying too much into it, relax. This is uh, it's entertaining. I know there's like two sides that people are like, oh well, they can be entertaining and they don't have to do that. I understand that, but uh, shots are gonna be sh- thrown both sides guys we've seen it already both sides before since january it's gonna happen regardless of what we want it to happen or not let's just enjoy it it's funny i found it funny i didn't sit there i was not sitting there being offended at all throughout any of that throughout his interview that he had not too long ago i didn't feel offended at all i i really don't care this is all part of his character that they're doing with him i think it's different it's funny and as i always say you have to keep an open mind and i think it's entertaining so 
you really do need to keep an open mind about it. If you're taking it way too seriously, you kind of need to take a, a step back and a notch down and just enjoy that, it. Just enjoy it. I thought it was I, funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the whole point of being the lead. It's just like friends hanging out, being funny with their little skits. I mean, we've heard from Rick Knox. We've heard from Brandon Cutler about these skits. It's just good humor. Don't take it so serious. So, mm-hmm. so that, was, that was it for being the lead. That was the end of that. So it was an interesting episode going to be interesting to see what they do we're going to have probably one final one next week and then we don't know what the schedule is going to be like for it i'm sure they're going to announce it next week i'm sure there's going to be announcements all over their right. twitter pages or the aw twitter page about what's going on with being elite in the future so as of right now it looks like it's still going to continue or else they would have done something at the end of this episode to like end it or something so i'm excited uh we're going into dc next week it's exciting times tiff very exciting times and we're literally almost a month away from Full Gear. Yes. Full oh, Gear. Yeah. Saturday, November 9th. Live yeah. in Baltimore, of all places, at the Royal Farms Arena. Me and Tiff will be there live. AEP will be in Baltimore live for that pay-per-view in StarCast. So if you guys are going, make sure you keep an eye on our Twitter accounts to come say hi to us and whatever. Because uh, we're going to be there live, as you can see there on screen. Kyle and Tiff yes. live in Baltimore for Full Gear. Can we, we'll be- uh, can we call Nick to uh, be our special referee? Oh, wait, excuse me. Let me not use the word Whoa. special. <laughs> yeah, you can't use that word. We know, Tiff, if you didn't learn anything from the episode. Oh! <laughs> um, yeah, so can we have Nick join us and be the, the honorary referee? <laughs> okay, honorary referee. Honorary referee. Okay. Gotcha. If you guys didn't watch that episode of Under the Ropes, please go back and watch it. It was one of our favorite interviews. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so we'll be there live. We'll be able to see this match. Moxley and Omega go at it finally. One-on-one. Yeah. Can't wait for that and the build up for that over the next couple of weeks heading into November. Um, and then also, they made a new graphic for it on, uh, I think it was uh, the, the Road to TNT this week. I love the new graphic for it. I think this one's okay with Moxie Omega, but then look at this graphic they made for Cody and Jericho for the World Championship. And what's interesting about this, folks, is that they've added with MJF onto this one. So Cody will have MJF in his corner for this. I don't know if he's going to have another match that night or if he's just going to be the manager for Cody that night. But Cody's with MJF going up against Jericho for the World Championship. So take that what you will and... Put that into your predictions yeah. if that's going to affect your predictions for full gear. But that's a sweet looking graphic. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Take my money. Take money. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're already taking my money for the next two months. So take more yes. of it. Why don't you? You're gonna broke. I don't know. I'm going to have to sell a kidney. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a well, good thing. Selling like, <laughs> kidneys. All right. I didn't know we were talking about a podcast about selling organs. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That organ <laughs> podcast. Oh, Lord. There we go. <laughs> Anyways. Um, news and rumors? News and rumors? Why not, Tiff? Well, let's get it. <laughs> get into the news. Let's get into- <laughs> All right. Let's get into that news. With All the right. new- we got a new intro for it. So let's get into the news and rumors. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. A little bit of the bubbly. Time now for the AW News. And rumors. All right, news and rumors, Tiff. Let's get All this right. going. Let's get this popping. Go. Get right, this popping. Yeah, we'll, right. we'll have you start there, Tiff. Why not? All right, let, let's ladies do first. As we know, <laughs> AEW TV has a name. Woo! <laughs> so- in July, Only Wrestling announced that it's the first live weekly show will be premiere on TNT starting October 2nd. And now we know the show will be called Dino Mine. Dino Mine. <laughs> that's a little, that's to have a little bit, you know, going on there. Mm. But yeah, so Wednesday Night Dynamite will live, uh, will air live starting at 8 p.m. and run for two hours. The first episode on October 2nd um, from the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., which shows in Boston, Philadelphia, Charleston. Uh, Charlotte, Nashville, Indianapolis, and Chicago to follow. The card for the first episode of the All Elite Wrestling Dynamite includes a one-on-one match between Cody and Sammy, a tag team match between Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks against AEW champion Chris Jericho and two mystery partners, MJF taking on Brandon Cutler and appearances from Hangman Page and John Moxley. Cutler 
square footage. <laughs> um, the biggest night, the biggest match of the night is between Rio and Nyla Rose mm-hmm. to become the first mm-hmm. AEW Women's Champion. Mm-hmm. You know what's exciting? I got to see the the first man um, world champion, and now you get to see the first woman live. I think that's oh, pretty awesome. That's cool. The podcast. So unless something goes terribly wrong, and I don't. But well, I hope. Knock on wood. That was that knock. <laughs> I hope you find a replica of women's belt and you take a picture with that since I was able to take a picture of the replica. Yeah, that's weird. So if, I yeah, hope that was find- a quote unquote replica. <laughs> I'm still going that you stole the belt, Tiff. You threw it in the side of the road. Don't you don't you try to be I, sneaky with me? I hear always throwing me under the goddamn bus. Like what is Come wrong on, there's with no replica. The there was bus. no replica. Be honest. Right. All right. He found the EVP of giggles, and I just couldn't help myself. You know, I am from New York, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anywho, so yeah, Dino Mai. So we got details on uh, AW Dynamite. Uh, All Elite Wrestling signed a very good deal with Turner, so we know that's going to be huge. Going to be on TNT. As it turns out, AW will also have TBS and True TV at their disposals as well. October 2nd is the date for the big TNT debut of Ollie Wrestling Dynamite. This will be a big night, but it won't come without competition from WWE in a big way. We already know that. With uh, We previously reported that AW is scheduled to get a Saturday morning replay on TNT. So that's pretty cool. So it's going to get the replay on Saturday morning on TNT. It turns out that they are getting far more exposure than that because of their debut episode will air a total of six times across three different networks. And here's that schedule. So starting Thursday, October 3rd at 1 p.m. on TNT. Or sorry, 1 a.m. on TNT. Saturday, October 5th at 10 a.m. on TNT. That same Saturday at 10.30 on TNT, which is weird. So I think that meant to be uh, 10.30. Oh, yeah. So 10 a.m. and then 10.30 p.m. that day. My bad. Uh, Sunday the 6th at 12.30 a.m. on True TV. Sunday the 6th at 12 p.m. on True TV. And Monday, October 7th at 12.30 a.m. on TBS. All are in Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's been compared by by c- cable outlets. And Dave Meltzer later commented on the subject during Wrestling Observer Radio. All Eat Wrestling Dynamite will air on tape delay for West Coast fans. So if you're in the West Coast, it will be tape delay, unfortunately. That means AW fans in the Pacific Time Zone will not be seeing the show live. The same is true for other time zones as well. Of course, they can always tune in the east coast feed to watch the show live if they have the ability the ability with the satellite provider uh, the good news is that tnt is keeping aw on prime time no matter where they are airing the show the bad news is that the tape delay could encourage some fans to skip the show and simply read the results we previously reported that fox is doing the same thing with smackdown live so it won't be airing live on the west coast either so if you're trying to knock aw right away eh, 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 smackdown's doing the same thing It'll be interesting to see whether AEW will continue to get this kind of replay love from TBS and True TV. It could certainly help them spread the word all about AEW Dynamite as things progress. So, unfortunately for everyone in the Pacific Time Zone, I'm sorry to tell you that it's going to be tape delay. But if you have a satellite provider that can get the East Coast stuff live, good for you. If not, it's just the way it is now until they work it out. It's just, again, everything's going to happen this way. In the beginning, right. folks, you just got to stay patient and roll along with it. Like myself, I'm staying patient, sort of, for the Canada broadcast to be announced. But, again, I have my ways to catch it live. You find ways to catch it live. Um, big Sling TV. Yeah. And if you're big, and if you're big into AW like we are, why would you want to read the results? What fun is that? Yeah. That's like watching paint dry. It's hard, though, like especially with social media. Yeah, just stay off. Yeah. Yes, I did for an entire weekend for all out. You did, and you were losing your mind. Don't yeah, lie. I was. You were losing your mind. Yeah. So, anyway, moving forward, Cody Rhodes discloses what kind of alternative AEW will be. Um, he recently spoke on IGN where the idea of competition was brought up. It's no secret that AEW was planning a television show and they have been working on it for a while. This was done before it was known that NXT was going to the USA Network at all. They feel only wrestling has a product that fans want to see. Therefore, the idea of competition isn't even irrelevant for them. So quote from Cody Rhodes, we can't pretend that we don't know that it's happening, but we're always planning our show and have been for a long time. For a long while. This isn't a uh, reckoning move on our part. This is our intentions where to be on Wednesday nights and to be a major network with such a great partner with Warner Media and TNT. Our focus is to still 
uh, on providing the best AEW, providing the best alternative. We haven't switched over to, well, how can we compete? Because we already felt we had a product that people want to see. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> We want to provide to bell, uh, provide bell to bell sports centric pro wrestling. That's going to mean longer matches. That's going to mean stories being told between the ropes. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this. Yep. That is no invisible camera backstage. That's going to mean more of a live sport approach to our product, which again, I'm so excited for mm-hmm. because it reminds me of like New Japan. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a hundred percent what we're doing. So I want to avoid any uh, of actual elements i love the monday night wars i did and i'm not trying to be naive and ignore a situation where it's like hey if this happens we'll have to play the card but i'm just saying i want us to be more about our young and upcoming crop of talent exactly which also rick knox Mm -hmm. in our interview had talked about this as Mm -hmm. well so if you have not watched that interview please go back and watch it um cody rhodes didn't go as far as kenny omega did go as far as Kenny Omega did to say that NXT is developmental while AEW work, has work. Real star- <laughs> He still doesn't see the competition, only the opportunity to perform on a national level. We'll have to see what kind of unique look at All Elite Wrestling could be going for with their sports-centric feel. That could be just one of the many differences that this new pro wrestling alternative is going to offer fans. It's exactly what Cody said in that second paragraph. I love that we're going to get provided bell to bell sports centric pro wrestling guys it's going to be different than what you're used to seeing on WWE so if you're coming over and expecting to see the same thing you're not going to get the same thing you're going to get more of what they feel wrestling should be about more sports centric and less sports entertainment uh, and the, the idea of longer matches is great we might get like 3 maybe 3 matches total on a 2 hour episode or 4 matches total meaning some of those matches are going to be long. We're going to get 15 to 20 minute matches on those episodes, which I'm excited for. So I love that they're going in with, in with that losing the invisible camera backstage was a hell of annoying. Um, I just love that the more sports feel they're getting to it and how he brings up, like I know about the whole Monday night wars thing and how, uh, how everyone that's is seeing it like this, but it's not we're the alternative we're going to be different we don't want to take that approach and say okay how do we compete with what they just did they're going to stick to what they want aw to be and now they're going to stick to it no matter what's happening so i love that about it so thank or cody rose thank you for that interview and clarifying just how much of an alternative it's going to be uh, even though we knew already half of that but you know this is more of a clarification as well um let's get some more news this is interesting and very surprising and shocking. So Kylie Ray is actually set to be making a pro wrestling return, which we reported here on oh. the podcast that, you know, she was pretty much done in calling it a career. So uh, Kylie Ray requested her release from All Elite Wrestling. It's unclear why she did this. But Tony Khan said the split was am- 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 amicable. Blech, I can't say that word. Rumors that she wouldn't be returning to the ring started to spread. But it looks like they were a little presumptuous. It was previously reported that Kylie Ray was dealing with a medical issue. And that this is the reason why she didn't uh, appear at the few AEW events. Then it was revealed that the company granted her release. In a rather surprising move, Freelance Wrestling has announced that Kylie Ray will be replacing Shotzi Blackheart in an intergender contest against Isaiah Velasquez in on a on a game of genders events. And it was uh, there was a show that's already happened, so I have to go see how that was. Um, it is interesting to see, or is it is interesting how they use the fact that she deleted her Twitter account as a means to plug the show, but she never did address the issues surrounding her AEW release. So, hmm, this is hmm. very sketchy. I don't know. I'll have to see if this even actually happened. If she did show up, if anyone knows, let us know. If Kylie Ray did show up in a match and had this intergender match of all matches, it's just weird. It's just like she was there the first conference and the, the announcement of AEW and was going to be one of the big three women in the company and it's just from then on it was just like what happened so uh, I don't know if it's something backstage I don't know if there's something going on who knows we'll keep a look out mm-hmm. um, uh, AEW television deal with UK news yeah someone so, someone asked about it in the chat uh, this uh, is the news we have on it so this is what we have AEW will providing fans with alternative to use the to the usual pro wrestling on television, there is certainly interest all around the world. 
Uh, Talk, Sport re- Talk Sport recently spoke to the Young Bucks where they were asked about AEW securing television rights in the UK. As great as it might be to reveal this information right now, this is something they cannot do. I wish I could shout what I know from the rooftops, Matt said, when they asked about AEW's Dynamite coming to the UK. When pressed about it, whether their UK television deal would be in place by their October 2nd de- uh, debut, they remain non-committical. So... No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't. I can't talk. You know this. You know? Okay. Um, yeah, I can't talk. Okay. I don't want to say yes, and then it's not. So Nick said, hopefully AEW will be able to get their television deals in place very soon. They don't have much time left before October second, and there's a huge UK audience that could be very beneficial to their overall plan. I'm sure it's coming, guys. I'm yeah. sure it's coming. And then with the whole Canada, it goes back. This goes kind of the same thing hand in hand with the Canada thing. It's just like a wait and see thing. I'm pretty sure everything is being finalized. And when stuff like this gets finalized, they can't say anything until it's official. Like it's got to be pen to paper, official. You know, the company's good with it, ready to announce and ready to promote. They can't just say, oh, yeah, we're going to get, we're, we're, we're signing a deal right now. Just wait. You know what I mean? Like they can't just do that. So um, be patient is what uh, the main factor is here. It's coming. And I know they're focusing on UK and Canada because they know about the audiences here. Uh, in both continents so uh cannot wait for them to announce both and i will stay patient i'll try i know i'm a little bit of impatient person but i will try (laughs) all right um this is some weird this is some weird news and a lot of people are giving shit to this because of the name and you kind of need to like think about it what he had nothing to do with what happened all those years ago you kind of have to i don't know why people are giving him crap but uh this is interesting so chris benoit's son to join maybe AEW in the future? Uh, Chris Benoit's name will always bring up a bit of controversy, but his son, David Benoit, has nothing to do with the tragedy. Right there. Has nothing to do with the tragedy. And I, I was pissed to see people comment and, like, give shit about this. I'm like, are you kidding me? He had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Anyways, um, this surrounds his father's passing. He still might enjoy exp- uh, he still might enjoy experiencing the pro wrestling world. While speaking to the Pro and the Bro Wrestling podcast, who is actually run by uh, none other than uh, Darren Young. Uh, for you guys that don't uh, remember Darren Young, I hope you do. Uh, David Benoit talked about his time backstage at AEW. He also stated that it was great time and All Elite Wrestling is definitely somewhere he would want to go. This is a quote from David Benoit. I love AEW. That's a good time, good quality Good product and some good wrestling. I went to the show. I went to their first show, Double or Nothing. I want to go to AW 100%. I love AEW. I love what they do for the boys and take care of them. David Benoit didn't become uh, didn't become a star like his father, but he still is welcomed backstage in AEW. He also stopped by backstage RV events when they were in town. Um, but it is reported that he had a little bit of bad blood with them because he I guess he wore an AEW sweater. To one of the WWE events backstage. <laughs> so uh, perhaps the door might be open for Benoit to have a larger role in all the wrestling in the future as time goes on. He certainly seems up for the job. So I'm assuming if he wants to take it seriously and wants to get into pro wrestling even more, I'm sure AEW will always open the door to him. And having a name like the name Benoit is huge in wrestling. Regardless of what he did and that whole incident... Um, the name Benoit goes a lot in wrestling, especially in a company like AEW will go a long way. And um, people have to stop associating David Benoit with his father. He had nothing to do with it. And I, and I, I Tiff, I read so many hateful comments towards this. And I'm like, are you people that dense and don't like, you clearly don't know the whole story. If you're going to go and just, just because he's the last name Benoit, you have to suddenly criticize him. No, that's not how it works either. You know, it's just, Child. But I, I'd be up for it. If he wants if he wants to, give him a shot. If he's good, send him right. to the AEW Performance Center. See how he's going to do. Obviously, don't just throw him on TV right away. Give give him a shot. Give him a tryout. I'd say. I'm, I'm sure they have the door open for him. Don't we hear a lot of stories that it's because of somebody who if he's even passed that that's the reason, whether it's a son or something that the they name, got. The it's name like goes a long Char- way. Yeah. Charlotte's brother. Isn't yeah. that like why Charlotte wind up becoming a wrestler? Because of her brother? So, um, but yeah. Anyway, um, Cody Rhodes' hilarious idea for AEW mascots. <laughs> and speaking of mascots, we God, have our mascot. <laughs> Where is our mascot? Where, Where is, is he? Where is he? I can't see him. Where is he? Oh, there he is. 
Yes. We're back. Okay, sorry about the hiccup, folks. Oh, <laughs> Looks like I'll have to uh, I'll have to take both down and re-upload it. Well, okay. a lot of work for me up ahead and a lot of work calling my cable provider for that hiccup. Um, anyways, so uh, uh, we are going into uh, Cody Rhodes' hilarious idea for a mascot. Yes, yeah, so uh, I guess I should start over. <laughs> yeah, you should bring in Fat Pharaoh. Right. Bring back Fat Pharaoh in here for a sec. Because he got... <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, Favre. I think I think he's he's the cancer. It all it all crapped out because of when he got on air. I blame him. Favre, you get. The bell is shame. Shame. <laughs> oh God. Shame. My <laughs> God. Anywho, God. we're back uh, and uh, let's get yeah. into this idea. Well, anyway, AEW Wrestling Dynamite will make their TNT debut next Wednesday. Um, Cody Rhodes is thinking of some very interesting ideas for the show. Cody recently suggested that a dinosaur could play the role of Dynamite's mascot. He left it up to the fans to vote. The options are yes, no, hell no, and Cody shouldn't be a boss. <laughs> Just feel testing this with all of you. Everybody knows my love for mascots. Would you be interested in a dinosaur mascot who carries around novelty dynamite and throws out free shirts? Yes. I'm yeah. totally into this. I will call him Dino Mite. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, Luchasaurus found this idea very interesting as he said that they need to have a talk. We just have to wait until October 2nd to see if Cody Rhodes will get his Could mascot. Could you imagine if there is a mascot? That would be hilarious. That oh, would I'm be so good. That would be uh, so funny. I'm a big collar definitely up for mascots in this. You can tell we love mascots. We have Fat Pharaoh. We have the regular Pharaoh. There he is. So uh, we're all about the mascots. So if that happens, I I, I wouldn't be put it past <laughs> to them do like a little comedy skit with the mascot. Um, so that's that's interesting. We'll see what happens. And the Luchasaurus definitely will have an influence with that yeah. or some sort of interaction with the mascot. Um, next, almost done here with the news, folks. Uh, could AEW eventually be three hours? I hope not. But we got some news about it. Uh, Ollie Wrestling is set to debut on TNT for October 2nd. The show will be a live two-hour experience on cable, but could a third hour be added? IN or IGN recently spoke to Cody Rhodes where he addressed the possibility of AEW holding an extra hour of programming that this might be a BR live since they have a lot of resources there. This is a quote from Cody. It will probably... It, it will probably li be live for people to stream on BR Live. We also we have a lot of resources, and we want to make sure that people can plug into the wrestlers who we signed and who they're fans of. And we're going to try and, and keep everybody busy. All Elite Wrestling's attempt to keep their stars busy sounds like a plan. It will probably be very easy to accomplish, especially considering the amount of talented wrestlers to have on their roster. I don't know if. Um, they're going to uh, be serious with this and doing three hours. I mean, it could be like another app exclusive. Like it'll be two hours on the uh, two hours on the actual cable, and then if you want to do an exclusive third hour. I mean, I'm not. It's tough. It's tough right now. I think maybe it's a future, not like right away kind of thing, but in the future when they start gaining more talent, they'll have to think about it. So uh, we'll have to see. Yes. Wow. Uh, so anywho. Um, let's get into the big thing here. Yes. And as the, the big heading of this podcast and people were looking at it going, what the hell? Why are they reporting this? It's fake, blah, blah, blah. Yes, people, we know it's fake. Okay. <laughs> this is the worst Photoshop done ever. Well, not the worst, but it's, I can tell it's Photoshopped, um, being a semi-amateur graphic designer myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anywho, um, so here's the, the Instagram post that someone posted that got a lot of uh, attention over the wrestling Twitter world. Uh, this guy named Gargone, Gargano Dude. Sorry, Gargone. I'm thinking about your boy Gango <laughs> there. So Gargano Dude. He's hot. Everybody, like, he's hot. So, like, you know. <laughs> so he put, did TNT just spoil this? Because why is this on my TV? Hashtag AW Dynamite. He puts, note, if you're going to post this, credit me because it was on my TV with a laughing emoji. And it shows CM Punk versus John Moxley. I mean, it's very cleverly done. Yeah. I'll give him that. But I highly doubt this is real. And I, I highly doubt this was his TV a, because you can't even see the TV. All you see is the black around it. This could have been your laptop, oh. bud. <laughs> you can stretch the picture out any way yeah. you want on Instagram. That's what it is, too. So, 
this is interesting. And I want to just bring it up because it's, can you imagine though, if that's a big surprise and it actually get John Moxley and Punk having a little small interaction match, like, Oh, because the, the the big week in wrestling this week, I, it would help AEW. I'm not saying it wouldn't, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think AEW is going to stick to doing their own thing. I'm not going to be going to DC hoping to see CM Punk. I'm not going to be believing all the rumors out of that day. People are gonna, probably going to spread a lot. Like, oh, CM Punk spotted at Washington Airport, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? It happens all the time. Yeah, if he did show up at All Out, he's not showing up. That's just yeah. how I feel about it. And I've talked about it like, I don't want him there because... We have all this amazing talent that I'm so excited to see bloom in this company. Right. So I have an article that transitions about this. So uh, it's titled, AEW has a full roster, but can they make room for a big, big name? It, again, AEW is set to be airing on TNT in just a few days at this point, but some of the fans are expecting a big surprise. CM Punk's name keeps coming up around every corner, no matter how busy the Second City Saviors uh, schedule is already while speaking to talk sport nick jackson of the young bucks answered a question about cm punk coming to aw anytime a wrestler is unhappy with their current company all elite wrestling always comes up the rest the roster is full but you can never say never because they're always going to be room for a big name if uh they're interested which i don't know about this article i don't think they're full yet i'm just gonna say that was this quote from nick he says uh yeah that's definitely true everyone gets linked it's hard to say because you, like you said, everyone is linked to us. If there's anyone that's unhappy anywhere else, it's like, oh, well, they're going to go to AEW. <laughs> I mean, it's true, right? I don't know. I know the joke. Some people go, oh, AEW confirmed. But, like, some people actually, like, are serious about it. And it's like, no. Just because you're unhappy with the company doesn't mean you're AEW bound. Right. Um, the reality is we're – this is from Nick, though. He says, we have a full roster completely. We're only going to have one show a week. The roster we have now is what we want and what we wanted. For us to utilize each talent as much as we can, I feel like we have enough people. So say, so never say never, though, for someone who is a huge superstar, I guess you can make a you can make room for a big, big name for now. I feel like, but sorry, make room for a big, big name. But for now, I feel like we have a complete roster. So Nick says they have a complete roster, and oh, but he says they're revealed 40 percent of this roster by the way yeah. but i i agree with him saying that for the roster they have now and for the amount of time they have per week it's sufficient i think if we're going to get everyone but you also have to factor in this he has to say that because it's media but we have to factor this in that we've brought up many many times in this podcast aw is going in a lighter schedule we're not going to see the same people every goddamn week and having matches every single week on the roster that's why tiff when she brings up the 40% thing, that's true in a way because they need to have more people on the roster to fill in the gaps for people to not have a busy schedule and to be wrestling every week and to be doing that grueling schedule that WWE does. So I know that they don't have live events lined up now and it's only one week, one match a week shouldn't hurt, but it goes a long way in terms of television production rather than longevity of the wrestler or injuries. So Well, yeah, I was going to say it prevents the injuries mm -hmm. as well. So... This is interesting, but he, did, he didn't leave it out that there's always room for a big, big name if one decides to come over. So when I brought up the whole thing with the Instagram thing, with the fake punk and John Moxley thing, if this is true for some weird reason, that would be a huge name to make room for. Um, I know, especially if you look at the AW roster now, and if you add a CM Punk, he has room to be, you know, to do his own thing and to be huge in that company. There's no one really there to overshadow him that much, especially because they're going to be focusing on tag team wrestling if you look at the singles roster there's room for him to be big in that company so you know it's it could be it could be i wouldn't i would be okay with it i'm just saying the photo's fake it's 100 percent fake i know but you don't want to take over completely the aew mm -hmm. world and roster with with big names mm -hmm. you want to develop these characters exactly and what we went to er what we said earlier with the rick knox thing they said don't be shocked they're going to be pushing a lot of younger talent so and I'm telling you, like I've said prior before, a lot of this talent I have been following in the indies, and you guys really don't know. And a lot of them are very young, mm -hmm. and the potential that we're going to see, and since now that we're going to have them on the weekly shows, they're only going to get better. And I, look, like MJF, he's already like gold, and and mm -hmm. his mic skills are absolutely amazing, and uh, his ring work is, is good enough for yeah. TV, but I, I only see more room for growth, and he's young. He's what, 22, 23 years old? Yeah. 
Um, it's just, it's just insanity. Uh, Darby Allen, uh, the private party. I, I can't like <laughs> give me already. Like, you can give see me, how much me. she is. She's struggling. Her eyes were closed for like a good fifteen <laughs> seconds there, folks. Like it was just, she was just I'm going hard. The- <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're changing my name for EVP to Giggles to the Queen of the Indies Fine. because I talk so From now on, I will refer to no. as the Queen of the Indies on oh, the no. show. Nope. I'm so so you're like, you're like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, oh. But yeah, I'm very passionate about all this and I'm ready for next week. I'm so pumped for next week. I'm going to be there live, guys. So if you guys are in DC, hit me up. I uh, hope you guys, and for you guys watching, I hope you guys have fun. We're going to have one more podcast before next week's going to be next Tuesday, kind of like a preview of DC and any news and rumors up to that point being the elite review, normal stuff on this show. So look out for that. And hopefully by then on next week's episode, we'll let you guys know on what the future structure and when we're going to be doing our first television review show. Yes. And I think we're going to have a co-host next week. So after this Ooh. episode, I'm actually sliding in somebody's DM to see if that works for them. Sliding. And slide to the left. <laughs> slide to the right. Anywho. <laughs> All right. So, well, yeah. that dance podcast. Anyway, <laughs> um, we got uh, – we're ending, ending the show. I'm going to have to clip this with the other one. I apologize. So I'm going to have to take down the other one for now, guys, and then redo my power of video editing and then re-upload it for you guys. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to it be it for the All Elite Podcast. This has been episode number 43 for your – uh, t- today's episode and today's edition here on the No Holds Bar Network, your source for wrestling podcast content. Go check out the network, guys. We have a brand new show on there. We have uh, the next podcast with our, our new friend and podcast family, Skelly Bones. He'll be doing NXT reviews every single week, doing crazy stuff. He's got a good wrestling voice. I love his podcast voice, guys. Go check him out. He's going to be adding some more segments to that show as it grows here on the network. So go follow him as well. We have the Under the Rope show with future stars lined up, hopefully coming soon. And maybe some more uh, AEW um, uh, AW interviews on the way. We've done Brandon Cutler and, and uh, Rick Knox so far. Hopefully, to get more names in the future as well. Make sure hey, you're I following us on t- what? I'm working on something. Oh. So, somebody. Well, like I said, make sure you follow us on Twitter at All Elite Pod. Make sure you're following myself, at Real Kyle Masters, and you're following my co-host, Loves to Dream 82, and following the No Holds Barred Network at NHB network on twitter that's gonna wrap it up guys i'm your self-proclaimed greatest host of the podcast and the network kyle masters always joined by my co-host she is the queen of the indies the heartbreak (laughs) chick tiffany and that's gonna wrap it up guys and we'll see you guys next week we're almost there for aw on tnt dynamite